Welcome to Love and Money Secrets TV. Alexandra Cousins, we're streaming you live from Valley, and I'm here in Orange County, California, in Huntington Beach. Thank and you I want to for thank you for taking time out of your, your busy day and your beautiful paradise that you are uh, in. And um, Alexandra, um, just thank you for being willing to share your story and to uplift and inspire folks all around the world. Yeah, thank you for having me. I always love sharing and especially in times like these, I feel like we need all the inspiration and magic that we can get. Absolutely. So before we dive in deep and get into the meat and, meat and potatoes, as they say, uh, of your story, tell us a little bit about how, you know, where you were born, where you grew up. Did you come from a large family, a small family? just uh, so that we can kind of get to know a little bit of your background before we dive into how you were able to manifest this incredible um, experience that you're actually living in right now. Right. So I'm German origins, but I grew up in Italy and born in Switzerland. Um, so really I spent my life in, in Italy until then I went to boarding school in Switzerland um, at the age of 11 studied in America, lived in America for seven years in San Diego, which I absolutely loved. And, and then went and worked all over the world, first in, in spas and healing centers with a little stint in fashion in between, mm. which was kind of like my ego, uh, you know, needing a bit of a wild ride and, and some satisfaction to then come back to the world of healing and spas and um yeah centers for cellular detoxification which is really what we are building here on bali i'm actually currently on another little island off bali which is called gilly air and it's a tiny little island where you can walk around in an hour and we just happen to be here by synchronicity and when the lockdown happened, in fact, a couple of days before the lockdown, I just felt like I'm not ready to go back to Bali. And, and then the lockdown happened and we could have, we could have gone back to Bali, but I just felt like we're, we're much safer and freer here where we are. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to stay on this island where, yeah, it's absolute paradise. And I really feel that we've been gifted this opportunity to almost live the future. Um, and what I mean by that is besides centers for cellular detoxification, uh, our vision, my husband and I's vision is to create uh, what we call utopia. <clears throat> and, you know, utopia is, is a place before a physical place. It's really a place within ourselves where we feel deeply connected with the divine and we can create our own utopia wherever we are, right? We know that. Mm -hmm. And we wanted, we have this vision. We've always had this vision since we came together to create actual utopia somewhere in the world. And we were guided to create the first utopia which we call Utopia Rising here in Indonesia, which will be a development for people to come, like-minded people to come and live this new lifestyle of regeneration on all levels and purification on all levels. And so in many, in many ways, we feel what we're doing here is we are getting a taste of the future that we are creating. Wow, that is such a beautiful integration and a weaving of, of your heart's desire and what your current reality is. And no one could have ever anticipated that the world events that have taken place in the last 90 days were going to unfold as they have, but here we yeah. are. And so let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about how, what brought you specifically and this is not a promotion of Dr. Joe. However, we are both advanced students of Dr. Joe, so we are very deeply entrenched in not just studying it, but applying it, living it, and doing it. And that's why I wanted to have you on this broadcast, because more than ever, people all over the world are looking for answers. They're looking for what 
works, not what do people say works, but what do people actually say they're doing that works and they're actually living proof that what they say yeah. work actually does work. That's the, you know, th that is, I think, the coup de grace right now. So what led you to Dr. Joe's work? For you, it was both you and your husband uh, that were led to his work, correct? Yes. Yes, we both, uh, we've been aware of Dr. Joe's work for many years because we've been, you know, on this path really individually. I've been on this path since my mid-20s um, and so has my husband. And then we came together 14 years and we dove deeper onto the path of self-development and, and deep spiritual practice. And we were aware of Dr. Joe's work maybe already, you know, for like, probably like six years, five, six years, mm -hmm. but we only re and then we would dip sometimes a little bit into it. You know, we got a book, but ultimately, you know, truth be told, we only really got deeply into his work on a consistent basis, maybe like six, seven, eight months ago where we started to practice on a daily basis. In fact, we dove in and we started practicing twice a day and we've always had a meditative practice. Um, for about, you know, off and on really for like 13, 12, 13 years. And we would fall off of it and come back to it. And then in the last six years, you know, really went deep into it. And then in the last, um, yeah, probably like set, maybe, maybe nine months now of, of Dr. Joe's work, where we started practicing daily, twice daily. In fact, we started with the morning and the evening meditation. Mm -hmm. And because it was easy, and it was something that we felt was very doable. Um, typically, our morning practice is sort of like a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour practice anyway. And so doing the half-hour meditation seemed very doable. And we felt from the first one that we did that it was, it was so simple and yet so powerful. In some ways, we felt it cut through a lot of the other stuff that's out there. And it went straight to the heart, which we had already tapped into, which is really um, amplifying the feeling of what we want the future to feel like. And that by feeling it, we bring it into the present. And so, yeah, I mean, very quickly, in fact, um, I was I was just saying to my husband uh, the other day, I said, you know, do you remember when we were, because we just gave up our whole life in South Africa. So, you know, after we were, we were living, I met my husband in South Africa, kind of left that piece out. So I studied in America, you know, wor worked worldwide, but then came to South Africa 16 years ago, uh, originally to open health spas. And then met my husband and, you know, have a, have, we have a, had a family there. And we were very strongly guided actually through the Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations uh, or through the aftermath of the meditations into leaving South Africa. And so it, we got very strong guidance um, last year, sort of like July, August. And we had just come back from uh, doing some deep, uh, work and workshops and retreats in Bali uh, as well as in the States and Mexico where I was running retreats and yeah when we got back from Bali uh, or already in Bali like we just had this this feeling that you know we had to pack things up in South Africa and leave which for me was very kind of unusual because I was very firm in I love South Africa this is my country it's where I want to be and yet once we had that insight, it was like, yeah, somehow it feels like we need to leave. So what, about what time frame was that? You said it was last year, right? Yeah. So we, we were in Bali um, June, July, August, and um, which is pretty much like around that time we started with the meditations, you know? Or maybe it was because we went into we went to the states in May. So about like May May June is yeah May is when we started the meditations, and then somewhere along there we started getting this feeling. And initially it was like a faint feeling. It was like oh maybe, you know, but things that you brush off and you kind of think, 
like we didn't think much of it. But then we got back to South Africa in September and kind of a series of events happened where we just knew it was, it was time. And in some ways, like it all came very sudden because, you know, here we are now. I mean, it all happened like super quickly. But to me, that's just testimony to really the power of um, Dr. Joe's meditations. And then also at some point in the meditation, so this, this was then once we knew we were, we were coming to Bali, I had this vision um, or it was, it was a desire. It was a feeling. The feeling was like, oh, I actually just want to have some months to take off and to just live on an island and not do anything yeah. before we start our new venture, you know? Because yeah, you know, my mind, right, and my mind kept saying, "Oh, but you know, like you just need to dive into the next uh, next venture, and you need to work because you know it's going to take a lot of work." There's a lot to you do. You know, the mind, there's a lot to do. Yeah. And yeah. well, long story short, we find ourselves here now. Uh, you know, certainly until the beginning of May, we'll be here, and so then we'll be we'll have been here two months on this paradise island, really not doing much other than being, experiencing, being. Yeah, you know, one of the things that um, uh, has really been more clear for me uh, as I as I've done more and more of Dr. Joe's meditations is that there's a certain incubation period that things take for them to manifest. And I'm sure that people, as they're listening to this now, they're going, yeah, incubation period. It's like, you know, years, decades. Uh, and that's not necessarily true. It all depends. I think what, what the thing is that you hold in your, in your manifestation, because you can manifest something within 15 minutes, it's been my personal experience, you know, it can take, yeah, certain things have taken years, other things took a few months. Uh, and then yeah. as you start tracking, and this is where, for me, things took a quantum leap once I started doing Dr. Joe's meditations as opposed to, because I never did guided meditations before Dr. Joe. Uh, that did not start until, I just, for some reason, I didn't believe in doing guided meditations. I, I would get myself into a meditative state and I had all sorts of really great mystical experiences, but I'd never done a guided meditation until I started with Dr. Joe, which was basically almost exactly a year ago, late last March. Mm -hmm. so for you, I want to ask you, um, was that also your experience? And because here you're in the midst of, you're now starting to live what you had, you, you had a desire for it, you started to meditate on it, now you're in it. And there's a, a knowingness at a deeper level that it's like, no, it's not like the old way of doing things where it's like, you know, you're a taskmaster and you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all these things that you need to do. So talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, I mean, already before Dr. Joe's meditation, I had this practice where I would actually imagine myself as a hologram of my future self. Oh. So I would... I would see the new me because I, I was, I was very sick six years ago. And so, you know, I used that practice. I was bedridden and, you know, didn't have any energy and just like at a really low place in my life. And all I wanted was to have enough energy to be with my children and to go for a family outing. And so I would see myself my future self, strong, radiant, you know, exactly the way that I wanted to feel and be and look and wear and everything. As you are right and now. <laughs> as I am right now, as I am right now. And so I would see her and then I would literally construct her with my imagination. And then I would make this movement and I would slip into her. I would imagine myself slipping into her. Mm -hmm brilliant oh and i would start to kind of like move because you know my body was so tired and everything was so much effort and so for as long as i could sustain it i would just pretend and i would go like how would i walk in a room if i would know i'm living my dream life i'm living my purpose and at the time i still 
I didn't really know what it was, but I was like, okay, the feeling, let me smell it. Let me taste it. How do I walk? And then I would look in the mirror and I would go like, oh no, you wouldn't walk like that. You would walk much more graceful and easeful. And then it was like, I would go in the kitchen and I would put some music on and I would go, well, how would I dance if I would know that I'm living the life of my dreams, you know? And so I would really just, I would call it into my body. And then of course, yeah, so it was all about embodiment. And of course, at some point, the mind would come in and would go like, oh, but look, I'm feeling so terrible, you know, and I would lose it. Mm -hmm. Which is fascinating because as you embody it, you actually do start to feel it, which kind of tells totally. you, it's, a, it's kind of like showing you a, a glimpse of how powerful you truly are. Yes, absolutely. And that's when I realized just as I've been so powerful to manifest this level of dis-ease where like everything in my life seemed out of sorts, you know, like, I mean, I was 40 and all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, like my life is a mess, my health, my relationship, my career, because everything seemed untrue. Mm. You know, it seemed like from the outside, it was all pretty. Yeah. But at the core, it wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't feel, you know, it was like, oh my God, like I'm living a lie. Everything is pretty on the outside, but actually, Not on the it doesn't taste good. Well, you said, you've said several things that I want to take a little pause and I want us to just savor the deliciousness of what you said. Because one of the things you said was that you pretended as you projected in your imagination that future self that you wanted to embody, quite literally, yeah. you wanted to embody yeah. them. You pretended in your imagination, you, um, you actually, you know, embodied, like you made believe that you stepped into that person's body and then you smelled, you saw, you heard, you tasted, you sensed, what it was like to be in that body. And then you said something that I find to be so powerful because I believe that our language does leave us clues, but we've been unconscious to them. And you said that you realized. And what does it really mean to realize? To realize means to make it real. Mm -hmm. And when you remember what that persona was like, the persona that was healthy and vibrant and enjoying life and just having a delicious experience, when you remembered that person, your member re-became that member. That's what remembering is, to embody yes. again something that once was, whether it was mm -hmm. in your past, because you were healthy before you were sick, or the mm -hmm. member that you were projecting forward in your future imagination. And then you were recalling that future and making it your now. Totally. That is yeah. so exquisite. So, so continue on because I, I, you know, I'm okay. sure that there was a process that you had to, you know, part of the, the mastery of this work is the battle of self. It's like the, you're calling the new you and there's the you that's right here in this moment, but in the past. And it's want to suck you back into that because that's what it's more familiar with. So, so share with Absolutely. us a little bit about how did this continue to unfold? I'm curious. Yes. So a big, a big part of this really was on one hand, feeling deeply into the pain of who I had become, who I, I had allowed myself to become, Ooh. which was so disempowered. Um, I mean, you know, I had so many issues from unresolved eating disorder that was really like lagging for 35 years. I mean, there was just so much. Wow. And... I, so the old me was like, but you are so damaged. You are so broken. You are so messed up. 
And yet I knew that the future self was a real possibility. Like I knew that that was my real self, mm -hmm. but the, the, the gap was so wide that, you know, plus my career wasn't what I wanted it. My relationship with my husband wasn't what I wanted it to be. So it was, it was like overwhelming. And there were times where I could feel into the story that I had created, which was, I'm just going to die because it's easier because then I don't have to face all of this. Like and I had created, yeah. And I had created this beautiful story that, oh, this poor woman, she was so lovely and she could have had it all, but she died of this mysterious illness. Oh. And I had to also, just as I was feeling into the future possibility mm -hmm. of expansion, I also had to feel fully into the possibility that I had created for myself, which could end in death, right? It's, it's almost and like so the, the, the not, same dissatisfaction was creating this other out, this unwanted outcome that you really didn't want, but it was, it was serving a purpose for you apparently at the time. It was serving a purpose, absolutely. And, and I had to go there. I had to go, well, why did I create this? Because I didn't create this out of stupidity, oh. out of, you know, weakness. Like there was a, I knew that there was a reason why I was living out all those shadows and why I was feeling so weakened. And ultimately I realized that yes, like I had a death wish because it was too hard wow. to create what I really wanted. You know, it was like, okay, so I'm living with this death wish because wow. it's too hard. And because I was blaming my mother for all my pain. I was blaming my father for a whole other set of pain. Wow. So I was in, I was blaming, I was in victim mode and I just had given up wow. and it was easier to go, what, I'll just die because there's still like a beautiful romantic story there. Oh my goodness. Wow. That must have, were you shocked or were you, was that um, like when you realized that, that that must have been very sobering and very alarming. Yes. Well, it was, you know what, in some ways it was, liberating to finally go okay like now we have the truth it's not that there's something wrong with you like that's when i realized that is how powerful we are and you know at the end of the day i've always been deeply 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 mesmerized since the age of five with illness and disease i've always just been mesmerized by it because wow. i think i always knew since child was like what is this thing that we call illness why does it come to some people but not to others yeah you know it is it is very random and of course you know nutrition has a lot to do with it oh, yeah. and genetics and you know there's all these things yeah. but ultimately there's a deeper mystery to mm -hmm. illness and that was my fascination. And so when I broke down completely, in spite of all my nutritional studies, et cetera, et cetera, what I found was that, I mean, I heard spirit guide me and say, this is your initiation. This is your time wow. to heal yourself because you can, mm -hmm. and because you came here to show others how to do it but before you can show others you have to do it yourself and so once i got that message i and i really got it you know something really clicked and i stopped going to doctors i stopped trying to look for answers outside and i just fully focused on okay i'm gonna take on this initiation I could die from it, but at least I die free. Wow. So it was really, it was that dramatic of 
a moment of saying, okay, I'm going to take this challenge on and I'm going to embody the fact that I chose this. It's nothing external. And of course, initially it was like, well, how did I choose this? You know, so I had to work with all of that. So it was really working with the resistance and seeing I can choose a future timeline by embodying it and by using my will in the right way. Because so far I had used my will in the wrong way. Yeah, that's, that's I think part of the beauty because everybody is using their will oftentimes to create what they don't want versus what they do want. So that, that is so beautiful. Yes. And to some degree, you know, like I realized that I was using my will almost to prove to my mother and my father, but primarily it was my mother to prove, look how miserable you made me. Look how little you loved me. So you're like trying to punish her. Yes, I was completely punishing her. Completely. Wow. I, I fully ownership of that. It was like actually everything that I've done so far was trying to punish her whereas my but then on other t in other ways I was trying to please her so it was like this it was all for her so you weren't really living for you you were you were you were giving your power to her and you didn't even realize because you've been doing it so long that you were actually giving your power away to her and you had to detach yeah. become unattached to her, your father, the externals, it sounds like, in order to move forward. And take ownership of all the ways that I had disempowered myself. And then, of course, there were a few things in life that I had kind of like stolen for me. It was like, okay, there's certain things that I steal for me that I take and claim, mm -hmm. but not from a place of like, of course I can claim them, from a place of like, shame and guilt and so okay i live my life my way in these terms but it's like stealing so there's shame and guilt which is the lowest vibration yes oh what i right. what a, you know like dr Brene brown talks about guilt being a useless emotion because it doesn't give any benefit to you or anyone around you wow yeah yeah and so once I had that realization of the guilt and the shame that I was living for the few things that I had claimed for myself, whilst being in total um, disempowerment towards really my parents, and it, it was my doing. It had nothing to do with them. You know, then it was a whole reclamation of my life. And, and then I got the strength to go, okay, if I'm going to live and if I'm going to take my energy and apply it to fully healing my life, everything has to be my way. Wow. So what did that look like? You know, it was like, because that's a radical leap radical. from what radical. was to, to now you have that realization so how did you proceed forward knowing that you had to make that radical, you know, that's a radical leap. You know, clearly you have yes. to take a leap of faith. Completely. Well, in some ways it was easy because I was so sick. So it was like, well, if I'm not going to do it, I'm going to die. Okay. So that gave me almost like carte blanche to go. You have nothing to lose. I had nothing to lose. And, you know, interestingly enough, the first place that I started to take action was I realized, you know, we were living in this beautiful home, which I had decorated all with like kind of French furniture. And, and I realized that was not for me. I created that home the way that I did again for who, for my mother to get her approval. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. So, so the first thing I did was I got rid of old furniture. <laughs> and literally my husband came home one day and you know, our big French gone. He was like, where's the bait? Like, you know, <laughs> sold it. Sold Next day, it. Table, like I just, everything. Yes. I mean, I just put everything kind of like on a cheap, you know, it's like, I don't care how much I get for it. I want it gone. Oh. Yeah, you want I that want old it. energy out. Yes. yes. I just needed the energy out. Yeah. And I knew, I knew that by leaving empty space and by, you know, and there was no plan, by the way. You know, it's not like I had it all planned out. Okay, there's money coming in to buy new furniture. Nothing. I went on a wild rampage where I just created space, space, space everywhere. And the home was just the first tangible thing that I could think of doing. And every time that I would look at the empty spaces, I would, instead of saying, oh my God, we no longer have that beautiful dining table. Oh my God, we no longer have our expensive bed. It was like endless possibility is here. Yes. Yes. And from there, I just expanded. You know, it was like piece by piece. The next big piece really was cleaning out my body. So really, wow. which was part of the healing process. Oh, absolutely. But I want to pause. I want to pause with your furniture cleaning because people, I think they just look at it very three dimensionally and they don't really realize there's actual physics behind this because you know, and I know not just from having experienced this particular exercise of purging physical objects, but those furnishings actually have a vibrational energy and a vibrational frequency that no longer matched where you were at and where you wanted to go. So the sheer fact that you didn't go off of intellect, but from, a, from an energetic place, you, you inwardly knew that you could not keep that in, your, yeah. in the space, which was your home. Your body is your home, and then the place where you sleep, the place where you eat, where you live every day, that's your home. And those yeah. things, you know, they're tantamount to you having a picture of a swastika or a satanic symbol inside your house. It's like, this has got to go. This is not good for me. I need to get rid of this. This is bad energy. And even though it's bad energy for you, it might be good energy for somebody else, but you need to move this out of your space. In this time continuum, this has to be out of sight and, you, and the universe hates a void. So as you clear the space out, physically speaking, you are now allowing goodness to come in. The same thing as yes. you clear out the toxins and the things that you know aren't good for your body, the same thing. It allows for the, the room for the new, positive, clean, healthy cells to regenerate inside you because they're not crowded out by those toxins. So you're doing, this is, this is so fantastic. And I love the fact that you're sharing with us that you didn't have a plan. You trusted in- Completely. Yeah, and, and God, the creator, the universe, the divine, infinite source intelligence to provide because the you knew, the new you is all provided for. You had already seen it in your mind's eye. You knew what was going to come. You didn't know the specifics, but you know what the yeah. end result is. Absolutely. Wow. And again, you know, I, I, I have to reinforce it was easier because I was sick, you know, but then I also oh, realized you would think it would be more difficult because you're sick. You're more tired. You're not feeling good. You'd think it would be more, you know, horrible, but you're yes. actually saying well, that it actually was easier because you were sick. You're like, there's only one yeah. way up. Totally. And because I had no more time for nonsense. You know, I had no more time to be nice about things, to be patient. Like it was just, I was ruthless and it, and I did feel like this is life or death. And once I felt, once I saw the whole story, it was like, 
I want to reclaim my life. I have not lived my life. Wow. I thought I did, but I haven't lived my life. And of course, then, you know, the other big piece of the realization was just how much life was there waiting to be lived. Mm-hmm. And, and in many ways, just how wild I actually was. You know, there was like a wildness within me that was there waiting to be stripped away. And I realized that all my disease and my um, extreme exhaustion was because I kept shutting myself down over the years and boxing myself in. So you were silent and without knowing it, you were silencing your voice. You were making yourself smaller to please others. You were being less than uh, because you wanted to please your mother, your father, whoever. And that, you know, holding that energy in for so many years finally took a toll where it started beating you up inside. It sounds like. Completely, completely. And you know, once we liberate that energy, and of course, you know, it's a, it's a progressive um, journey. It's more and more and more. And it really became like my body taught me everything. And it was meditation that kept me on track. But ultimately, what really changed everything was the stripping away of toxins and the deep cellular cleansing and regeneration which as much as all the specialists, you know, were like, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. (laughs) That was what allowed me to rebirth myself or rather it allowed my body. It allowed me to put my body into nature's hands onto nature's operating table and to go, okay, you know what? I have no clue because I thought I had so much clue. You know, I mean, I was an overachiever in all ways. Like I was intelligent. I was good. And I thought I had it all figured out. But then the breaking out of the body was kind of like, well, what have you figured out? Because look at your life when you take away all the facade, right? And in many ways, that was the hardest thing to face but once I faced it, it was the most liberating moment because then there was nothing more to hide. It was like, okay, here's the shattering. Here is the truth. Wow. Wow. So you gave up the story of playing small and blaming anything, everywhere, everyone. Mm-hmm. Well, and I also gave up the idea that I know. And what came in was like, you know what? I don't want to know anymore. The only thing I want to know is what is the divine's plan for me? Because I knew, and of course, this came from my, you know, already long spiritual journey. Like I knew we all came here for a reason. We all are in a body because we have something to give, something to live out. And at that point, I was like, okay, I don't care what it is. I don't care who I am, what I'm meant to be, but all I want to be is what the divine plan is for me. I wanted nothing. And I was willing to literally give up everything. If my marriage had to come to an end so that I could live my full self, cool, no problem. Show me, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. If I had to lose all my material things, no problem. Show me, mm-hmm. I'll do it. It was just, you know, that moment. And from there, I allowed full guidance from the divine. And all I did really, and all I'm still doing, is I just took instructions. You know, listen and obey, listen and obey. And then, of course, take action. And when I couldn't take action, and this, of course, still happens because I'm still on this journey, then I feel into the resistance. 
Yeah, because that resistance is showing, that's the thing, whenever we have resistance or a challenge or the unwanted, that's there to show you it's polarity. It's like, okay, what's that? What's that showing you? Because that's really what it is. It's showing you something. Yeah. Wow. So it sounds, uh, it sounds like you really came to that place of absolute surrender and letting go mm -hmm. and uh, in your knowing that even though you were highly intelligent very meticulous and organized and successful in so many different ways that ultimately that infinite source intelligence has the the true answer for you to be the the you that you really came to this life to be and to gift this world of your yeah. humanity with your skills and your gifts and your talents because ultimately we are all here no one is on this planet just to fulfill themselves um, you, you that's a byproduct of being here and living your purpose and doing what the divine has really um, destined for you and uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and it sounds like you just finally got to that point where you have, you know what? I give up, I surrender, I let go. I have nothing to lose. I have everything to gain because the alternative is, like you said, you were willing to, it's like, well, you know what? Let, let me die from this, from this disease because of all this horrible past that I've had. And yeah, I'll die, I'll die young, but at least I'll be relieved. And it's like, it's easier to quit. Then so city. until you're like, so city. yeah, so well, it's like when the alternative is death, then you really have nothing to lose because when you die, you, <laughs> you lose everything, including your body. So it's like, okay, let's try this other. So how did yeah. you, how did you on a day-to-day -day basis? So how did you, how did you, I don't know if manage would be the right word, but how did you um, interact with your husband? Because I'm sure he's going, what's going on? She's, she's not the same. Something is different because, you know, men are sensitive creatures. They can, they can, oh, even yeah. as distance, they can feel that something's kind of going on. So, so he must have been going, you know, is she having a midlife crisis or is she losing all of her marbles or, you know, what was that like? And how did you, how did you maneuver? Well, I mean, my, my husband, yes. I was, I'm very blessed. My husband is an astrologer, sort of, I mean, now full time, but back then he was still working in corporate himself. And, but because of all the work that he's done and being an astrologer, you know, he took one look at my astrology and he's like, okay, you're in, you're in this deep for the next two years. And he was the one actually who also told me, this is all about your deepest spiritual initiation. Uh, you're here to, you know, find your inner shaman. And so he left me complete and utter freedom. And he just knew that for the next two years, it was going to be a really wild ride. And I had all his support. Um, so in, in that sense, I was really, really blessed. You know, he just completely came on board with me. He joined me in the cellular detoxification and he knew that this was, you know, also the transformation of our relationship yeah. and he was ready. So it was, you know, that was wow. a, a great blessing. Wow. That is such a beautiful, beautiful um, thing to hear. And it's pretty obvious to me that not only is he your soulmate, but he obviously truly unconditionally loved you. Uh, and loves you to this to this yes. point where he recognizes it's like okay this is part of yeah this is part of what you and I we signed up for this way in advance and Absolutely. it's supposed to be and it doesn't always have to be pretty it doesn't always have to feel good it doesn't always it doesn't have to be any one way let's this is what's supposed to be so let's we're in this together so and I'm going to allow you as much space as you need to do what you need to and I'm going to love you no matter what so you know, and that's what you do for each other. And so I think that is such a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing to, um, to on this side from where I'm sitting, it's like a beautiful thing to witness. 
And I think it's also encouraging for people who are out there who are in relationships with their spouses where they're going through this transition. It's like, don't, don't be afraid. Just take mm -hmm. care of you and do what you need to. You couldn't be yeah. preoccupied with all those externals, mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, mother, father, yada, yada, yada. You needed to take care of you so that you could get down to the heart okay. of the matter and what really what really you had to deal with because what you thought you had to deal with wasn't what you had to deal with i think i think yeah. you must have been surprised when you realized oh my gosh i created this death wish i don't think anybody would ever want to admit to it's like oh yeah i created all these you know accidents all these diseases and it was a death wish because you know, you kind of off yourself off a little bit sooner, put yourself out of the, out of the running, so to speak. And everybody's going to say, well, yeah, look at you, you know, you're on, look at your situation. Of course, you're going to be, no one would argue with you. And so it is a self-imposed death wish. Yeah. Yeah. And I do feel that a lot of women, you know, because through the process, really what I, what I found, and, and of course now working with mostly women what i see is that so many of us you know we are wild divine creatures and we know that yeah and so few of us live out our wild divine in a healthy way yeah because we have these ideas right i mean we it it, it either um goes in an in an unhealthy direction where it expresses itself in excess in you know many forms but it's still a perversion from our original divine wildness which is always pure and piercing mm -hmm. right we all i mean when i look at women i see every single woman men similarly as well in their own way but i love women's wildness because we all have something that is so powerful so beautiful yeah. but oftentimes it's covered up by all the layers right like i was playing the fashion designer i was playing the interior decorator i was playing you know the one that needed all these things mm -hmm. when in reality like the truth was that I am the complete opposite of what I was portraying on the outside. <laughs> wow. It's, it's radical to, you know, and now that I am living fully and ever more my wild divine, I can see, well, just as I wasn't living it, there are so many women out there not living it. Yeah. And we may be successful may look picture perfect but until we're living our wild divine truth we are not going to be fully satisfied and therefore we are never going to bring the full amount of joy and healing and potential out into the world either yeah yeah you have to live out loud like you're saying and i think that you know women as as the um, selected ones to bring life, new life into this world. We're the ones who, you know, receive the seed so that a child then is born within our womb and, and then that child can come forth. That same energy is not just reserved for childbearing, but it, it's there as a primal force, as a wild, pure force that we can use to create all sorts of things in, in this uh, 3D plane world. Yeah. And, and in recognition of that, there's a, certain, uh, there's a certain responsibility and a certain respect that we have to have with this force. But I think that, I think that oftentimes we see a lot of people suffering from, you know, everything from alcoholism to drug abuse, to shopping addictions, to gambling addiction, all sorts of other things. And those are just attempts to to um, make smaller, to appease down, to not feel that energy and trying to keep it and contain it because it's an unbridled energy. And if you were to allow yourself to feel the feelings that you 
are feeling throughout your body because I think that our bodies are speaking to us all the time. And if you're able to embrace that and recognize that, you know what, that, that mama bear that's inside of us that wants to protect our children, that wants to protect those who are close to us that we you know, love and adore, that, that uh, force that's in history, we've seen women who have been able to pick up cars to save a young child and have done all sorts of other incredible things, that force, that power can be used for good for us to bring forth our life purpose and show up in the world, in this world, in a beautiful way. So, so how did you how did you move from once you started to heal and um, and you continue to move forward in light of that? Um, what were some of the first steps that you started to take? Because healing, oftentimes, you know, some people are fortunate in that their healings they'll have a moment, which. You know, we've seen in, in the monastery where we've de- done the coherence healings where you have a healy and we, there's the eight of us who are the healers and somebody literally, you know, as soon as we're done with that coherence healing, they either get out of the wheelchair or their bodies are contorted and now all of a sudden they're straight and it's an instant healing. And that's, I'm sure, a much different experience than for most of us. It sounds like for yourself and for myself, it's been true. It's been more of a gradual process where one thing might be healed, but there's still other things that need to be healed. So, so how did that uh, unfold for you to, to the point where you ended up now in Bali? Yeah, it was definitely progressive. And I mean, I would say the greatest burst of healing came really from purifying my body And where I healed beyond what I thought was possible. Oh. And that kind of, that gave me sort of the strength and the insight to see that we are so completely unlimited. And in some ways, as I started healing physically, I started sharing my story. And, you know, initially, like I literally just, I started on Facebook because I realized, wow, there must be other women like me who are sick with mystery illnesses, who are told that there's no hope for them and that there's no healing when in actuality you can heal beyond what you thought was ever possible. I mean, I would say now at 46, I feel better than I did in my twenties. Wow. You know, so once I realized that and I started sharing in some ways, like that was my purpose. I mean, that is my, it's part of my purpose. And again, I saw my, my deep interest in understanding illnesses, you know, it all kind of like, it all came together. It was like, that's why I was always interested in illness because I realized that the model that exists out there, the model of medicine you know, is just not complete. I mean, I fully appreciate that medicine has its place. Yes. But it's not complete. Science has its place, but it's not complete. And that we are leaving out such a big piece of what we can only call the mystery of human existence and that everything is connected. And so what I realized to my own journey is that actually we, we, can, we cannot, cannot own ourselves. Say that again? Just like we Say that again? We cannot only heal one part of ourselves. It has to be holistic. It has to be holistic. It has to be holistic. And that really and truly everything is connected. And so in the process then of, of, as I started sharing my journey and I thought initially maybe like 50, a hundred people are interested. And before I knew it, I had like a thousand, 2000, 3000, you know, and now six and a half thousand people on our page and people started reaching out to me and people um, started following my protocols and then asking me for coaching. So it was just like a very organic, gradual process it kind of happened without me even really realizing, like it was just really led by the people. And, 
as people started having, you know, also miraculous healings and recoveries, I realized we have to get this information out. Like it was just, you know, I was cold. And as much as in between, I kept thinking like, oh, I don't have enough energy to do this. The more that I responded, the more that I started giving, the energy came. You know, it was, it was just amazing. I just started having so much energy in my body. And before I knew it, I started teaching others because now we have um, 12 certified coaches around the world that teach what I taught them. And, you know, so it was just this organic process where it assembled itself. I always say, like, I didn't really do anything. I literally just followed the requests of the universe. And all I did in between was whenever there was a resistance, I felt the resistance and I just allowed the resistance to melt away by having love and compassion for the resistance. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, I, I heard somebody not too long ago say something similar. You're saying, you know, having love for the resistance. And I heard somebody maybe about a week ago. And I thought it kind of caught my attention because somebody was saying that we should love the coronavirus because it's showing us, yeah. it's showing the world in a very spectacular way, things that we normally wouldn't pay any attention to, but the, the awareness is very heightened and the coronavirus is being used in this fashion. And I thought, you know what, yeah. that's true because you know, I don't care whether you call it the coronavirus, you call it MS, you call it Parkinson's, you call it cancer, you call it endometriosis, you can call it any disease, or you can call it, you know, uh, my doctor says it's a mystery disease. It just doesn't have a label yet. Basically, at the root of all of those things, not only is the lack of ease, but there's also fear, which is, I think, the worst virus I, you know, the most pervasive, the most sinister, the most malicious and malevolent virus that we've ever had on planet Earth is that of fear. Absolutely. And you know as well as I do, as well as not only Dr. Joe, but any physician, especially those who are neurologists who focus on the autonomic nervous system, we know that uh, fear creates a certain chemical reaction it it activates our first or second or third you know energy centers it takes away energy from our brain so we can't think properly takes energy away from our heart takes energy away from our extremities and it brings it down to the first second and third energy centers because it's 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 afraid that it's going to lose a limb quite literally and it's like it's a survival thing and you've got all those um, you have cortisols that are, you know, um, endorphins that are created. You have all sorts of stress hormones and you have now the signaling, not only the firing and wiring in your brain of that, the neurological pathways for stress in your brain, but now you also have the genes starting to flip on because of the protein, uh, you know, proteins that are now signaling the genes and now unwanted expressions are starting to sh- pop up because the DNA, okay, these genes are being flipped on for these things that normally were dormant. Now you're starting to get arthritis, starting to get MS, you're starting to get all sorts of things that normally wouldn't have been on had you not given your power away, because it really is a conscious choice to give your power away to fear. But the good news, which you're showing to us, your living, walking, breathing, uh, embodiment and a life testimony of somebody who turned off the fear virus and said, nope, that's an energy leak. Can't afford to have that energy leak around anymore. My ego, my brain, it, you know, in that mode, no. And I love the fact that you're saying now when you, anytime you see any kind of resistance, it could be resistance. It could be fear. You're like, ah, oh, wait a minute. What is this showing me? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because you're serving a purpose. Yeah. Just as the night yeah. serves a purpose to divide the day from the night, the night from the day, the same thing is with resistance and with fear. It's showing us something. We should pay attention, not suppress yeah. and deny it. Just go, wait a minute. 
why do I have resistance here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because also fear creates acidity in the body because everything in, you know, so that's really like, again, it's the biggest toxin in the body. The most costly and, thing to do for your body is to make it, yeah, acidic, which fear, yeah, and shallow breathing. Because when you're in the survival mode, the first thing people do, you yeah. stop breathing. You hold your breath and you start shallow breathing. Some people shallow breathe so much that they hyperventilate and then some of them can actually pass mm -hmm. out. That's creating a super acidic bloodstream. And because your bloodstream becomes acidic, then all your muscles, all your tissue become acidic. Guess what? That's a perfect breeding ground, you know, greet, breeding, <laughs> tongue tied, breeding ground for any disease. For everybody has cancer cells in their body. So now those cancer cells can multiply when you have a super acidic body or any other maladies in your body. Absolutely. So tell me more about this. Yeah. Um, you and said, then of course, yeah, you said, you said about you, you have a center for cellular detoxification. So what's that all about? Yes. So we're creating the center in Bali um, and cellular detoxification and regeneration. It's really all about, again, removing the acids that have been solidified in the body. Because what happens also on an emotional level as we, or energetic level, as we have all this fear running through our body, um, potentially even when we eat a healthy diet, right? Because I've had clients that had a fairly clean and health, healthy diet, yeah. and yet they were still highly acidic. Yeah. And if the emotions are acidic, you will create an acidic body. Now, the problem is that anything in the body energetically will then solidify and materialize in the physical, right? Yeah. which we then call yeah. dis-ease. We then give all these names to. But the origin is always emotional yeah. that solidifies in the body. But in order to undo what has been done, yeah, the damage. we need to use, yeah, in order to undo the damage, we need to undo the cellular damage through physical things like fasting. I mean, of course, the mindset change, the meditations, the breathing, all very important. But in essence, we also need to remove the acids that have been accumulated in the body and the calcification in the body, pineal gland, the endocrine system that just calcifies, the nervous system that calcifies due to the acidity running in the body and the, and the body buffering the acidity by pulling calcium from the bones, which is how you then get arthritis. So it's all these physiological uh, sequences need to be basically reversed by alkalizing the body. And so the way that we do that is we do it through specific herbal protocols. We do it through enemas, colonics, ozone therapy, lymphatic, massages lymphatic um stimulation you know so there's this and it's all fairly simple but there's sequences that we need to follow similarly you know when we've lived a toxic lifestyle we need to then uh enlighten the liver and we need to work through everything that the liver has been holding on to and and not being able to filter out so Essentially, what we're creating is a center where you can come and rejuvenate on a cellular level with the understanding that we also have to include the emotional and the spiritual and the mental work. So again, it is a complete holistic approach. Yeah. So, you know, I love what you're, what you're saying because it's so true. I remember, I don't remember the name of the gal who did a testimony for Dr. Joe and they have it on Dr. Joe's channel. If you, I'm sure I have it saved to one of my playlists, um, my Dr. Joe playlist and on my YouTube channel. However, this particular gal, she had owned an organic supermarket for I think 20 or 30 years. And I believe she's a Canadian lady. Um, and you know, she had pretty much accessible to her every kind of organic food, every kind of clean um, healing modalities. And she was very much, she knew that 
you know, you could heal yourself through thought and through meditation and, you know, eating a clean diet and so forth. And yet she ended up coming down with cancer and inevitably ended up having, to, you know, that's what led her to Dr. Joe. And then, of yeah. course, during uh, one of, I don't know if it was her first or second or her third seven day advance, you know, where she went to the monastery and I don't remember what part of the world, but she was actually healed in one of those. And um, she said, yeah, she, she had everything matter to matter, you know, all the organic foods for an entire life, all those things, but she didn't have her spirit and her mind wasn't organic, wasn't clean. And because she was making sure that she ate all of those things so that she wouldn't get the big C, she ended up getting the big C. And it wasn't until she was able to clean her spirit and actually go into meditation where she was able to release all sorts of things that then yeah. her body then became whole again and she was free of all, all that infirmity, all, all the disease. So um, this, is, this is really exciting to hear that you have this center and um, Valley, Valley Air. I, I almost got stuck in Valley because I was supposed to, true story, I was going to go to Bali from January 25th to February 20th. And then if I needed to, if I felt it was really a contemplative, I figured it's like my time in Bali is, yeah, I want to see the country, but I just want to be in constant meditation. You know, it was myself to really ground myself and be in a real spiritual place away from all the technology away from, you know, in a very pure um, healthy, natural, tropical environment. Mm -hmm. And um, if a few friends could come with, that was great. And if they couldn't, didn't matter. I was going to go no matter what. And then I had a project, you know, the divine, you know, God has a funny way of always working things out for the best is, has been my mantra for a long time. And then I had this big project that landed on my plate in January. Uh, it was going to take more time than I realized. And, and then I realized as the 25th was coming closer, I thought, there's no way I'm going to finish this in the next week or the next two weeks and then be gone. I'm going to have to push this back. So then I said, okay, I'm going to have to push this to June because in March, I was going to go to Costa Brava, Spain for Dr. Joe's advanced uh, seven day advance in Costa Brava, where he was going to conduct his monastery there. And then of course that got postponed, but um I'm still, I still have Bali on my list of places to go. So I would love to come by and uh, participate in your center and try your different cellular detoxification. I think this is a 2020. I go, isn't that funny? 2020, you know, we say we have 2020 vision, 2020 eyesight. Yeah. I believe that this is the year. I mean, I instinctively knew I'm like, oh my gosh, because 2019 was awesome. 2020. For me, it's still pretty awesome. I think it's, I really have sensed that this is the year of 2020 vision because things have been so clear for me. And I think that on a, on a mass scale, this is the year for our planet, all beings, all mm -hmm. humans to get mm -hmm. 2020 eyesight and inner vision in their lives. You know, how do you really want to show up in this world? Who do you really want to be those things that don't serve you anymore get rid of them get rid of yeah. them those things that make your heart sing if you don't know what makes your heart sing all the more reason to go within and say okay you know what i don't even know how to do this but it doesn't matter that you don't know how to do this because we're all connected with that that is intelligence you know anybody who's thinking well i've been disconnected no you're not that's a lie you would not be alive if you were disconnected. Oh, I need to do more shadow yeah. work. I need to, I need to, um, you know, it's all a, a bunch of baloney. The thing is, you just need to get started today and say, you know what? I don't even know how to meditate. The good news is if you don't know how to meditate, you don't have any bad habits in meditation. Just, oh my gosh, YouTube yeah. is wealth of information. Just going to your Facebook page, friending you on Facebook, and checking out your videos and checking out your meditations and then checking out Dr. Joe's meditations. He has tons of free meditations, both on Facebook 
and on YouTube, start there. And then as soon as you start off with that, I would encourage you to go on to his, his uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza com site go to his page where he has his store all of his meditations for six dollars you can buy a meditation i mean my one of my favorite ones to tell people to start off with is the yeah we have everything six dollars who can't afford six dollars right now breaking the habit of being you you get not one you get two meditations the water water rising meditation and then the body parts meditation absolutely we're both over an hour long. Don't pay attention to how much time it takes. Just get lost in it. You don't have to be in a place where you're thinking nothing the entire time. Follow his instruction. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the sound of the music in the meditation, the sound of the reverberation of his instruction, his guidance, his voice during the meditation. And be open to just say, you know what? I let go. I'm open to whatever happening. I choose to whatever presents because you don't know what that's the thing in meditation. You don't know what is going to show up in those meditations. You don't know mm -hmm. and when it shows up. Don't freak out. Don't be afraid because it's you. You're there. You can stop it at any time. But why would you? Just let go and say, you know what? I let go. Yeah. I surrender. I allow whatever wisdom to be downloaded into me. I allow my body to shake if it needs to shake. If I need to moan or I need to scream, just let go. You're in the privacy of your yeah. own room. Just let gift yourself that. You know, if it's if that's living on the edge for you, live on the edge. And You'll be surprised, I think, at the spectacular things that will be, begin to be revealed to you. And just, and it's, you know, no one has it all done. I don't have it all done. You don't have it done. Dr. Joe doesn't have it all done. You know, uh, Danda Bandi, the, you know, the Hindu pr priest and monk who also I admire his teachings. He doesn't have it all done. Nobody has it all done. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. All that matters is that we're growing. You know, you're either green and growing or mm -hmm. shrinking and dying. And we want to grow our bodies, our spirits, our minds. So is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers here before we uh, wrap this up? This has been a, a, just a beautiful hour. Uh, yeah, thank you. I guess I really want to, I mean, my, my highest wish is for everybody to have the courage to dive into bringing out their purpose and their magic and, you know, and to, yeah, to really, to, to go there because nothing is more satisfying. And, you know, in many ways, like I can say this because before living the this lifestyle I already had everything right like I had most everything that most people yearn after and so I know that that's not enough that will never do it but the only thing that will truly satisfy us is when we get to live our wild divine purpose and that is my highest wish for everybody to go out and claim that because we all have absolute magic hiding within us yeah it's like a song that we need to sing to the world and i think that yeah. i think that's a beautiful note on which to finish this broadcast it's like yeah just have the courage to live out the wildest truest self and to let the old you die and put that in your past and yes. embrace and embody the beautiful true you that you were born to be, that yeah. you were, that we, we all had that song singing inside of us until it was slowly conditioned out of us after we were six, seven, eight years old. You know, the first five, six, seven yeah. years of life, we're in that theta state and slowly but surely, you know, our peers, our family, our parents, our teachers, society, 
it conditions that out of us because they want everybody to fit neatly inside of a box because you've, if you yeah. fit neatly inside of a box, then it's easy to teach since all 30 of you fit in a box. It's easy to teach you in a school system, especially a public school system. Those yeah. who don't fit inside the box, well, I'm, we're sorry, but then we need to put you in a different kind of learning environment or we need to figure out what to do because you don't conform to this box and we want everybody you want it to be easy peasy for us so that you fit into our agenda and so but you know what that's not really that's i don't believe that that's i know that that's not what the infinite sort of intelligence didn't if, if they would have wanted if if that infinite source intelligence would have wanted that then we would have been born that way and we would be all autotomons you know we would be all the same we would be all like robots and our beauty comes in the array of different colors that we come in in the array of different sizes in the array of different ways of expressing of sharing of having life experiences and then showing up and sharing how we went from despite sometimes really awful circumstances we were still able to come out of that place and be in a better place now and now guide others because they still have to do the work yeah you absolutely you can guide anybody into anything but ultimately they're the ones who wake up in the morning and either say oh good god it's another day i don't want to get out of bed this is horrible it's like why me you can guide them but then they have to decide to turn that around and say oh god yes it's another day my eyes are open i'm alive i can feel the air it feels cool on my skin it's a choice absolutely and, um, every every moment is a choice Alexandra, thank you so much for being on this broadcast live. Um, we'll be sure to put a link to your Facebook page. So for those of you on YouTube who would like to join her on Facebook, you can follow her there. She has beautiful posts daily. I would highly encourage you to click on all those pictures. I've got some of those pictures that I'm downloading from my vision board and my mind movie. Um, and just thank you for sharing your story. And we'll have to have you uh, back again. I think it would be fun for our viewers to, to meet your husband and have you both talk together as a couple. I know that uh, there's a lot of people who are looking still for, um, to find that type of a union. And you guys are that union where you are definitely in harmony with each other. So thank you for sharing your story and being open and vulnerable with us. Yeah. I'm really honored Thank to meet you. Thank you so much.